Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee Me, and today we're making stick lipsticks using this handy little mold, which is new from TKB Trading. If you've ever looked into purchasing a metal lipstick mold, you'll know that they are not cheap. You're looking at well over 100 US dollars just to get yourself started, and if you're not usually in the States, you're looking at a bunch of money for shipping and international fees and stuff as well, which is why I don't have one and why up until now I've never made stick lipsticks before, though I do get asked about them on occasion. And you know, when something's that expensive, not only do I not want to spend money on it, but I'm pretty sure you probably don't want to spend money on it either. So kind of, you know, why bother, right? But then TKB Trading got in touch with me about a month ago and asked if I wanted to try their new uh, affordable lipstick mold, two piece, does three lipsticks at a time. This beauty is $19. So that's totally doable for lipstick dabblers like myself. So today we're going to be making three lipsticks um, using sort of different levels of pigments and different types of colorants. Uh, I did a bunch of experiments using TKB Trading's lipstick base, which is a really lovely base. I've been very impressed with it. It works very well. And some of my base recipes from my book. So if you want to know more about those experiments, please go down to the description box and click through to the blog post that accompanies this video. The content is really different. It walks you through a bunch of different experiments that I did and you'll get to see a lot of process photos plus uh, picture swatches and a ton of different color blends. So definitely a worthwhile click. But yes, today we're making three different lipsticks so you can kind of see how everything works in action. In this video, I'm looking at three different ways to sort of blend up different types of pigments to get different levels of pigmentation and kind of chatting through some of the things that I've learned and tips and tricks and basically just kind of how to use the mold. There's lots more information in the blog, so this is more of a introductory like, check it out, I'm making lipsticks and they look pretty darn good. So yeah, come on, let's go make some lipstick. All right, so here we have everything that we're going to need to blend up some awesome lipsticks. So. Here uh, in these little dishes, we have our lipstick base, since we're going to be transforming the base into lipstick and then using this awesome new little inexpensive lipstick mold from TKB Trading to transform them into stick lippies. So it's three and a half grams of base in each of them. And so this is the base from TKB Trading. And again, if you wanna learn more about all this stuff, please go down to the description box and click through to the blog. There's a ton of information on my experiments with this mold and different bases on my blog. So it's very much worth a read if you have any questions. This is sort of more of a sort of a how-to and showing you a couple of the different things that I've um, discovered as I've been experimenting. So we've got a couple different classes of ingredients here. Up here at the top, we have dry powdered pigments. So we've got yellow iron oxide, red iron oxide, and this is the more blue red shade of iron oxide. We've got red lake number seven, red number 33, and red number 21. I have a lot more, but we're making lipstick here. So I've sort of left like the greens aside. And then we have liquid pigments. So this is the liquid sort of predispersed version of red number 33. This is red six, red 21, yellow five, and white, this is titanium dioxide. And then we've got a bunch of micas here. So we have sort of a silver white mica, gold, sort of a blend of different pinky, beigey, pinky ones, and some cerasite mica here. And then of course we have our little spoons. I've got my favorite spatulas here, one for each color that we'll be blending, a scale for weighing everything out, and paper towel, because paper towel is pretty much indispensable when we are making highly pigmented products like this one. We're going to do three different lipsticks today, since that's how many fits in the mold, and we're going to sort of build up to them in terms of uh, sort of the amount of color punch. So this first one gives more of a, uh, like somewhere between a lip tint and a lipstick. It's got an almost sort of gel-like tint to it. I really like it. So our first add-in is going to be 0.4 grams of cerasite mica. And then we're going to need 0.7 grams of these liquid dyes. So I'm thinking I want a pretty classic cool red. So I'll need kind of one of these, and this one is slightly cooler, so I'll go with this one. And then to cool it down even a little further, we'll have some red 33. So I'm gonna give these a bit of a shake, tear my scale, and we need 0.7, so I think I'm gonna go for around 
five five of the twenty one and then top it off with the thirty three. And that's it for this one. We'll set this aside and get uh, moving on the next one. For our next one, we're going to use a blend of micas and liquid dyes. So let's see here. We've got a lot of kind of pinky and tawny tones here. And for liquid dyes, we've got these. And maybe go for a bit of like a goldy pink. So I like the looks of this reformulated pink coral. I think they call that rose gold, don't they? We'll see where we land. <laughs> So we need 0.3 grams of mica, so we'll do 0.3 grams of this rose coral. And then we need half a gram of our liquid dye. So if we want kind of a rose gold, I don't think we'll need this one. Um, but let's do a bit of the red number six and the white will make for a more of a pink. And then we can hopefully sway just a little bit towards the gold side with a titch of the yellow. We'll see, this is always a bit of a, you know, you start with your color theory, but what you get in the end is still a little bit of a surprise a lot of the time. All right, well, that was a little bit more pigment than I intended to use, but that's okay. This is a pretty flexible project, so we'll set that aside and prep our last one. Our last lipstick is going to be a blend of powdered pigments and liquid pigments. So this is going to be the most pigmented lipstick that we're going to make. So let's see here, what kind of color do we want to do? How about a sort of a Hollywood red? See where we see where we end up. So for powdered pigments, for a Hollywood red, I usually like to do a blend of a red like or a carmine and a red iron oxide. So I find this is a little bit too pink, but kind of the orangey notes in this help tone it down. So we need 0 0.4 grams of powdered pigments. And then for liquid pigments, I think we'll do a bit of red six and a bit of yellow five, possibly a touch of titanium dioxide. All right, well, that's that third one. So let's get our water bath set up and start melting these together. So I've prepared a water bath here. So this is a saute pan, so a wide flat bottomed pan. It's got about one and a half centimeters, maybe half an inch of water in the bottom of it. And I've got it on about medium heat. So we're gonna pop our lippies in there. This is lippy number one, the lowest pigment one. This is number two, the medium pigment one. And this is number three, the high pigment one. Now we'll be able to distinguish between them even when things start to melt because this one, when you stir it, you can see that it has solid pigments in it. They'll take a while to blend in. This one will be shimmery. And then this one won't be shimmery and won't have streaks of solid pigment. So it'll be easy. So we'll let those heat up. And as we um, do that, we're gonna prepare our mold. And uh, just a side note here, you can see this is a dish towel with a paper towel on top of it. So when I pull these out and start stirring them, it's just nice to have a paper towel there so you don't ruin your dish towels because they're very pigmented lipsticks and they will stain things. So here's our adorable wee little mold here. And we'll need two rubber bands, a Q-tip, and a small amount of oil. And this is castor oil. So we're going to disassemble the mold and we're going to oil it up, kind of like a baking baking endeavor. So just take some oil on the Q-tip and make sure you thoroughly swab on the inside of all three cavities. All right, so that's all prepared, so I'm gonna set this aside until we need it. And now we have to wait for our bases to melt. So this is gonna take a wee while, especially because this water bath wasn't hot yet. So I'm gonna leave these for probably about five minutes and come back and check on them. All right, so it's been about five minutes and our bases have liquefied, so we can start stirring away here. So this is number two. You can definitely see it's got the shimmer in it and everything just incorporates really quickly because the pigments were predispersed and I just, I love that. So we're going to pop this in our mold now. So here she is. And one of the ways I like to remember um, 
which one is which is with the letters here, T, K, and B. There's three letters, there's three holes. So you can kind of have the T lipstick, the K lipstick, and the B lipstick. And you can just kind of remember that, you know, that's the way the mold is facing for one, two, and three, because it's easy to remember which one's the center one, but if all your uh, colors are, are really close, uh, you can start to confuse them. So this one, because it's the, uh, you know, the second one, I'm gonna make this one K, gonna be in the middle. All right. Here's number one, a more gel tinty one where we're going for sort of a, a cool red. Ooh, it looks really neon, but these ones always do. The ones with uh, cerocyte mica and no mica or powdered pigments, I find these ones always look really, really kind of neon and jelly-like in the blend. And then they, uh, they don't go on <laughs> quite as neon because they're not opaque. So they blend in really nicely with, the, with your uh, lips. So this one is going to be T. Oh, I'm going to let that cool down a bit. It's still really warm. And while that one blends, you can give this one a bit of a poke. So this one's going to take the longest to blend because it does have these solid pigments in there. And so I don't know if you can see as I'm smearing the spatula across the bottom, you can see smears of solid pigments starting to kind of break down and incorporate. So this one's going to take a wee while. And that's okay, honestly, like I want this stuff in the mold to set up reasonably well before I move it to the freezer so that I'm not, you know, walking gingerly across my house and terrified that when I shut the freezer door, the mold will fall over. I, I like it to be pretty much uh, solid before I move it to the freezer to freeze it. I'm gonna check on that other neon one for a bit. Should be cooler, I think. Yep, yeah, I think we can pour that now without me burning myself. All right, so this is looking pretty well blended. As I streak, I'm not seeing too, too many um, pigment streaks. So I'm going to pour this into our mold as well. And this one's gonna be the B. So I'm gonna let those cool a bit. I'm turn our stove top off here. So I'm gonna let those cool and solidify before I move them to the freezer. Okay, so it's been about eight minutes. So I feel fairly confident moving that to the freezer. But before we do that, I thought we would swatch our lippies on my arm here. So this is the first one. And so you can see it's more of a tint than an outright lipstick, but I really like it. This is the second one, the one that had the blend of micas and uh, micas in the liquid dyes, kind of going for a rose gold. I think we actually did pretty well. And then this is number three, the pure pigments combined with the um, liquid dyes, and we were kind of going for like a Hollywood red. And I think we nailed it. Now there's not very much product on there, but you know, if you really um, put more on, you can really get a really good coverage there. And I have very pink fingers, but I'm going to go pop this in the freezer for probably at least an hour because I have some other things to do. TKB kind of says that you can do 20 to 30 minutes, but the longer the better and I like better. So yeah, see you in a bit. All right. This has been in the freezer for about 90 minutes. You can see that they have contracted quite a lot, kind of broken away from the overflow. So we're going to just pull this straight up. And there you can see you've got three little lipstick nubbins. So now you need a lipstick tube. So I have a couple different ones here. This is the shadow black tube from TKB. This one's the black diamond. And this one is the economy. These two are the cheapest. I think this one is 55 cents a piece. This one's 75 and this one, I don't remember, a little bit more than the, either of those. So I think we try this one on number one. So you want to make sure the tube is screwed all the way up, all the way up, and then push it down and pull it straight up. 
All right, that one doesn't want to come out, so I'm going to push this down and I'm going to put it back in the freezer. Let's try the next one. This is the sort of rose gold one. Push it down. Bam, there you go. And then take this red one and bam. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna go pop this back in the freezer and hopefully we can get that other one to come out. But then here are our other two lipsticks looking utterly lovely. So this was in the freezer for maybe another 15 minutes and there we go, easy release. I find that's a, a good little trick there and something else you might wanna check is um, the coldness of your freezer, if you can turn it down a bit for this, that could be helpful. But you can see that was a really clean release. There's not a ton of, uh, of lipstick all down the sides there. Now something I can see here, it's pretty subtle, but I think I sort of over oiled these because I was, you know, really wanted to make sure that they came clean for you. Um, and you can kind of see it here because this one's melting a little bit. Um, there was a bit of pooled oil from greasing these up at the bottom of the mold. And so this one is sort of looking a little little wet right now, but that'll go away with first use or you could dab it with a tissue if you wanted to. Now I like to distinguish these from one another with a bit of washi tape. It just helps me um, yeah, recognize, especially when they've got the opaque tops. And of course I have a ton of containers that all look just like this. So I'm gonna take a bit of washi tape here. And so that'll go with that tube. And then this little piece of tape will go with the notes for it so I can easily tie them together. To clean the mold, TKB recommends just using another Q-tip with a bit of oil on it. And I find this works pretty well. Using a paper towel for the sort of extra bit on the top probably would have been a good idea. And um, it also is often helpful to let the mold come to room temperature a bit so that you can pick up the, uh, the lipstick a little bit more easily. But yeah, generally speaking, it's a pretty easy cleanup job, but I'm definitely not going to make you watch me clean this whole thing because it's also pretty boring. <laughs> All right, and there we go. We just made three gorgeous lipsticks with different levels of sort of color punch and shimmer and whatnot using TKB Trading's new lipstick mold and some beautiful pigments and micas and other fun ingredients. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. If you want to learn more about this mold and all the experiments that I did with it, please go down to the description box and click through to the blog. I've detailed all of the different products that I made with it and the things that I learned and you know, attempts at using different bases from my book and whatnot. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of information there. And if you want links to the products, of course, check the description box and the blog. I've got all of these ingredients in the mold, of course, linked there. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.